When you think of space elevators, you probably imagine something like this. Here we see a long cable attached to Earth, held taut by a weight at the other end. If this idea is unfamiliar to you, imagine spinning in circles while holding on to the string of a yo-yo. Tension in the string of a yo-yo holds it up. The problem with this idea is that you need a very, very strong string, something like carbon nanotubes. We don't currently have the ability to make these more than a centimeter or two long, far short of the thousands of kilometers required for an elevator. So, does this mean a space elevator is out of our reach? No, there is another design that would work using only technology we already have. Another one of my projects was to construct a ring around the equator which would, of course, float freely and could be arrested in its spinning motion by reactionary forces, thus enabling travel at a rate of about 1000 miles an hour, impracticable by rail. This video will explore what exactly Nikola Tesla was talking about, will cover what technology is required to turn this idea into a space elevator today and figure out how much the whole thing would cost. Imagine trying to sit still many miles above the Earth, much like the top of the space elevator would be gravity would undo your ambitions. Newton's third law says that for every action, there is an equal but opposite reaction. The orbital ring works on the principle of Newton's third law. Here we see a ring rotating rapidly around the Earth. At each attachment point, the ring's path is redirected downward by the elevator, which in turn causes an equal but opposite lifting force. The space elevator is attached to the orbital ring in much the same way that a maglev train works. By using superconducting magnets riding a track, friction is eliminated. Furthermore, the orbital ring is spinning very rapidly whereas the elevator is stationary with respect to the surface of the Earth. The attachment point of the elevator can ride along the orbital ring at the appropriate speed to remain stationary relative to Earth. If that seems confusing, just remember this, the only difference between the orbital ring and the maglev train is that the track, or orbital ring in our case, is moving instead of the train. Unlike traditional space elevators which must be around 40,000 km long, orbital rings can be situated at low altitudes. The only significant controlling factor is atmospheric drag, so you would not want your elevator any lower than about 2 to 300 kilometers. The strength of material required to build a space elevator is proportional to the length of the elevator, because the orbital ring is only about 300 kilometers above the surface of the Earth, it is possible to build the elevator with already existing materials like Kevlar. Material requirements are largely determined by the design throughput capacity of the elevator. Larger throughput capacity requires larger elevators and a heavier orbital ring. Since mankind started venturing into space, we have sent a grand total of 10 million kilograms of payload into orbit. We will design a small orbital ring that is capable of sending this amount into space each week rather than once every 50 or 60 years. After doing a little math, we can show that Kevlar is able to support a 300 km elevator with a mass fraction of about one-fifth. In other words, a 100 kg Kevlar tether can hold an additional 20 kg of payload. A minimum ring system capable of supporting 20 elevators spaced around the world would weigh about 4 kg per meter, or 1.6 times 10 to the 8th kilograms. The initial configuration of the orbital ring is very simple, in order to save weight, a steel wire rope, with flat aluminum sheets attached to the top, is built, superconducting magnets react against the aluminum, pushing down on the orbital ring, and thereby generating lift for the elevator. 
Each segment of the orbital ring is in free fall. There is no large structural stress on the ring, except when it passes through an elevator attachment point and is redirected downward. As a result, modular construction of the orbital ring is possible because the connecting joints need not be overly strong. The cost of constructing a space elevator is almost entirely made up of initial launch costs of the orbital ring and the first elevator. The subsequent 19 elevators on the orbital ring can be lifted via the first elevator. Current launch costs for SpaceX's Falcon Heavy rocket are $130 million for 54,400 kg to low Earth orbit, or about $2,400 per kilogram. The cost of a space elevator is almost entirely made up of launch costs. At $2,400 per kilogram, it would cost about $430 billion to lift the orbital ring and first elevator into orbit. That might seem expensive, but it is far less than the government gave away to banks only a few years ago. The overall space elevator system is about 48% steel, 48% aluminum, 1% Kevlar, and 1% other. The average manufacturing costs of materials works out to just a bit over $7 per kilogram. Compared to launch costs of over $2,000 per kilogram, the cost of materials is negligible, adding only $1.3 billion to overall costs, significantly less than 1%. Although the $400 plus billion price tag of an orbital ring and space elevator seems high, we will briefly show that it is definitely worth it. Space-based solar power has been considered for many years. Placing panels above the atmosphere means longer and more intense sunlight exposure. The reliability of the system is dramatically better because power production no longer varies with the weather. NASA has designed and priced space-based solar power systems. A 2 gigawatt system including hardware to beam power back to Earth costs about $5.7 billion and weighs 2.5 million kilograms. With a space elevator in place, we can send mass to geosynchronous orbit at the cost of about $2 per kilogram, adding only $5 million to the total cost. Starting with $700 billion, we could spend the following instead of giving away money to banks. $432 billion on rockets to lift an orbital ring and space elevator. $361 billion on solar power systems. $2 billion on the orbital ring, elevator materials, and launching our solar power systems. A $361 billion expenditure on solar power systems is enough to generate 127 gigawatts of electricity delivered to Earth's surface. That amount of power is worth $123 billion delivered to the United States, or $266 billion delivered to Japanese markets each year. In other words, the $700 billion investment would pay for itself in less than six years selling power to the United States, or less than three years selling power to Japanese markets. One might ask at this point, are all of these numbers overly optimistic? No, actually, they are overly conservative. Consider, for example, the great increase in efficiency from mass production. Studies have shown that prices drop about 15% for each doubling of the number of units made. The most used rocket designs averaged only about 100 launches per model, compared with the roughly 3,000 launches needed to place an orbital ring and elevator into space, this represents a doubling factor of 5. We can therefore expect to save around $240 billion from mass manufacturing of rockets alone, over one-third of the total cost of the project. 